What's up, pop makers? Welcome to the Edge of Tech, where we aim to educate and entertain the maker community. Today, we're gonna take Octoprint and put it on this Raspberry Pi and configure it for this Ender 5 Plus. My name's Jim, and this is the Edge of Tech. So like I said, today we're gonna to take Octoprint and drop it on this Raspberry Pi and configure it for the Ender 5 Plus over here. Now, that has been one of the most requested videos recently on how to set up Octoprint with the Ender 5 Plus. I'm here to tell you it's super easy, it doesn't take long at all, and if you follow these steps, we'll have you up and going in no time. So what you need is your Raspberry Pi, and uh, I prefer the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. Now those are becoming harder and harder to find, so you might have to go to the 4B, which is fine. The next thing you need is just a little micro SD card to put the image on. The next thing you need is your power supply for your Raspberry Pi, and this is a very important component. Uh, I have a couple in the description below that will work great. The Raspberry Pi one is very good. Uh, otherwise, there are a couple other options that you can buy with kits. You can actually buy a full case kit that comes with a power supply as well. So check out the description because everything you need will be in that description below. The last piece of this puzzle will be the USB cable that goes from your Pi to your printer. Now, I am using the Ender 5 Plus as an example for this video, but you can do this on the Ender 5, the Ender 5 Pro, the Ender 3, or many other printers out there. So, find the USB cable that works with your printer. I'll have the ones for this project in the description below as well. Some people ask, why do we do Octoprint on the Raspberry Pis? Well, a great reason is that you can control your printer from a computer anywhere you are in your house. The really cool thing is you can log into it, you can upload your print, you can set your temps, uh, and you can send your file all from your computer without touching your printer at all. And you can set up cameras to watch it, and you can do Octolapse and get a really cool time-lapse effect as well. As a bonus, I'm gonna go through and show you how to add my favorite three plugins for Octoprint along this video as well. Well, it's time to get going, let's do it. So the first thing you wanna do is go to octoprint.org and download the uh, OctoPi image. Um, you'll see this page, click the download button. That'll take you to a second page and this is where you download the OctoPi image. Right now it's version 0.17. When it gets done downloading, you'll go to your downloads file or wherever it downloads to, and you wanna extract this. So uh, I click on it, uh, click the extract button, and I'm just gonna extract it straight back into this folder. This will take a couple seconds, and when it's done, uh, you'll see this folder right here. Now this is your OctoPi image. Next, we need to install the image onto an SD card, and I like to use Etcher. So go to the Etcher website. Um, there's some different options, but I'm just gonna click the Windows one here to download it and install it using all the defaults. Just click Next, Next. When it's done, you'll see Etcher here. You'll go to select an image. You'll find that image file that you already um, extracted here. Now you'll plug an SD card in and click the uh, Select SD Card Target here. Make sure it's the one you wanna use. Hit Continue and then hit flash. Now, now this will take a little while, but it will complete. Uh, so you'll watch the little bar when it's almost done. You'll see that it goes through and it unmounts and it opens up your image that's on the SD card right here. The next thing we want to do is uh, configure the Wi-Fi settings. So right click and open this with anything other than regular notepad. I like notepad plus uh, plus. Then you'll come down here and find whatever security you have on your Wi-Fi. In my case, I have the WPA security that you see here. And uh, you just uncomment these little hashtags. And that will uncomment this whole section here. And tell it to use this SSID and password. And that's the next thing you do. You want to go right here and you want to type in your Wi-Fi name or your SSID and your password right there. Then you want to come down and I like to make a good practice of changing the country. Since I'm in the US, I will comment back in the United Kingdom 
and I will come down and uncomment the United States because that's where I live. From there, you just need to save this and you can close it and put the SD card in your Raspberry Pi. Now, there's a good chance that you're going to need uh, Bonjour to open the OctoPrint image. And so what I like to do is go to Bonjour, uh, go down here to Print Services for Windows and download that and install it using all the defaults. Um, once you're done with that, you'll be able to go into the uh, tab at the top and you'll go to http colon forward slash forward slash octopi dot local and it'll take you right into the setup wizard as you see here. Click uh, next and you'll start going through the setup. So the first thing we want to do is uh, put a new username and password in. I've set these up before so I'm just going to use my defaults here. Um, but make sure you do a username and password you're going to remember. And then keep access control enabled. You want to make sure that's checked. The next thing is the anonymous usage tracking. I like to enable it to help out OctoPrint. Uh, you don't have to, but I like to enable it. The next thing is the connectivity check. Um, I just leave it all defaults, enable that as well. And I click on the next. And then you always want to uh, configure the blacklist pro processing because that will get rid of the garbage plugins and should not show you the blacklisted ones. Uh, next thing we need to do is name our printer. Mine is an Ender 5 Plus because that's what we're working on today. And the model is a Creality Ender 5 Plus. Now what we want to do is configure the print bed volume here. In our case, the Ender 5 Plus is 350 uh, by 350 by 400. So you'll go ahead and type that in those fields here uh, for whatever printer that you're working on. Once that's done, uh, you'll go over here and you want to make sure you step your E-steps to 100 in the Accesses tab. Um, that's going to be good for most printers. The hot end you can change for whatever nozzle size you have. And then click that finish button after you read your disclaimers here. That'll bring us to the main OctoPrint page here. Plug your USB from the Pi into your printer and hit that connect button. And it will connect to the printer just like this. And you should see it connected and you'll know it says operational. Uh, the next thing I like to do is show only the stored locally files. That'll show anything that's only stored on your Raspberry Pi. Up in the right corner here, you can see different uh, user settings. Um, I don't usually change anything in here, but you like to see that. Um, and then up on the top, the control button will show you the camera. You can go through your motions. On the main page here, you can set temperature. So here's a nozzle and your bed temperature. Um, I know this is quick, but I'm trying to rock and roll here. The terminal, uh, you can type in G code commands here and have it sent to your printer just like this. But I think the first thing we need to do is go up here to the gear and let's do an, a software upgrade just in case it's not updated to the newest version. Uh, so quick upgrade and it will tell you it needs to proceed. It'll take a little while, but once it's done, it'll restart itself. Um, after about a minute, go ahead and attempt to reconnect by clicking that button and it'll take you back to the main page as you see here. Now you can go back to upgrade and see if you're on the newest version and we are. So the next thing I want to do is install some plugins. So click on plugin manager, click on get more and let's type in bed visual or just bed. And you'll see that bed level visualizer. This is the first one I love to install. So go ahead and install. It will ask you to restart when it's done. Click proceed. Um, when it comes back up, you'll see the bed visualizer just like this. Now we need to enter some G code in to make this thing work. I'm gonna use the G29T. So the first one I'm gonna do is G28 to do your first homing. And then that G29T. And that should work uh, for most of our printers, including the Ender 5. Now click the tab here and click bed visualizer. You'll see upgrade mesh, click on update mesh and it will run through the G28 and then it'll run a full mesh level. When it's done, you get a mesh like this and this is pretty dang close uh, from 0.15 to negative 0.1. I think that's a very close bed. I like that and I'll take it. 
Now I want to go to the next plugin, which is called Themify. So go down to plugins, uh, click get more, and then type Themify right here. And uh, this is a really cool app that allows you to do a lot with the interface. So we're going to install that like we did before. Reload your Pi. Uh, once it reboots, um, it'll connect back up and everything will look a little bit different, kind of in a dark mode. Um, I like to click uh, Start Connection Settings and Auto Connect on Startup. As you can see, we connected to the Pi. So let's go back to the wrench, go to Themify. And uh, we are going to go through and check out the different options. So this is really cool. You can give it all sorts of different looks as you go through here and, and click on the um, presets. I like the Discord look. And I go to Advanced Settings. And this is how it looks right here. Now there's some really cool things that Michael from Teaching Tech did to get your screen to look like this. Click back into the Themify settings. And what you want to do is freeze your video and put in these settings right here. So everything under the top two. So the last four in that section, you want to put that in just like you saw it and save it. And it'll come out looking just like this. The next thing we want to install is called Heater Timeout. So type in Heater, you'll find Heater Timeout. And install that like we did everything else. Now go up to the wrench here, uh, click Heater Timeout, and that will take you to the settings page. You want to enable it, and then set the timeout time. And what happens is, if your hot end is on for longer than this timeout time, it'll shut off the hot end and disconnect the Pi. And that is a pretty cool tool. And this is a really cool backup to Thermal Runaway. Now we want to go in and upload our first file. So uh, click on the Upload button on the main screen. Wherever your G code is, go there and double click or highlight it and hit open. It'll upload it to your Raspberry Pi. All you have to do is click on it and hit print right here and it will start printing. And that's it, we are done. So there you have it. I hope you find that it was really easy to set up. It's a really cool add-on option for any of your printers and I really love it on this Ender 5 Plus. Let me know in the comments below if you use OctoPrint or you plan to now after this video. I think this is a really great upgrade. Uh, it does so much. You can troubleshoot, you can send prints, you can heat up and cool down your printer. Uh, it just, it blows my mind how cool this open source stuff can be. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, give me that thumbs up. If you wanna see more, hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna be notified anytime we go live on our Monday night live show called Hot Makes, or anytime a new video comes out, hit that little bell that's somewhere right over here. I really appreciate you guys watching, and as always, keep printing.